So, instead of becoming a rocket scientist and building a cool rocket that can smash into the dome of our flat earth, or becoming the president, something Biden's clone is pretending to do, you have your sights set on vlogging. And I'm with you, and you're gonna need a camera for that. Today we talk, what are the best cameras to vlog your way to space and back? All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Oh. I wrote down a list of the best vlogging cameras. I looked at every system, and this is what is most viable today. I'm sure there's some better stuff that was created years ago. We do actually have one on the list. And I'm going from lowest weight to highest. So we start at the low end for you little squiggly armed mo -fs. We of course cannot have any vlogging list without the king of vlogging, Sony X3000. Coming in at 114 grams, this is still the lightest option you got. You got options, only one to be that light. To this day to have something that light where you don't even need an external mic, the audio was so good on that thing I do wish it was a shotgun, but it wasn't. But if you hold it right here, it's decent. It's not like this. It does, it has a mic jack and I'll play you a little clip. It sounds okay to the naked eye. You and your fancy shoes. Ooh, look at me, I'm a prince. Just a little bit compressed and super loud, but whatever, That you can't beat that thing if you can even find it. For that weight, coming in at number two, we got the DJI Pocket 2. Hopefully they come out with an update soon, but that's 244 grams now. We're easing up there. It's twice more than double the weight of that thing, the X3000. And if you're ever curious about those stupid sensor sizes, I found a way to make it make some sense. Sony X3000 has a one over 2.5 of a sensor. What the hell is that? Divide one by 2.5, you get 40% of one inch. And so the DJI Pocket 2 with its one over 1.7, the smaller number is actually bigger because when you do that divisication, you get 59% of a one inch sensor. It's probably not even accurate, but that it makes sense. So not bad, not bad. Moving on up in the world, you got your Sony ZV-1, not even much heavier than a Pocket 2 with a one inch sensor. 100% of a one inch. You also have to factor in the cost of a lamp post so you can stick the ZV-1 at the very end of it and then it should be far enough away from you to where you're in the shot. I wish I had a longer lens, but it doesn't. And the fact that it's actually pretty light, lighter than what I'm using right now, that shocked me. I was like, what? The GoPro 11 with its cage and the audio adapter ends up being heavier than the Sony zv ones bullshit. This has a smaller sensor. So those are the top three lightest options. When it comes to the fourth, don't mind me. Your phone is that answer. That's what I love about it. I can have a tripod here, just boom, and then I'm off doing something else. Okay, we're shopping now. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get on a scooter, boom. Clipped on. In fact, let's, that's dangerous. Let's switch to the phone. She hit the curb of snow. It's Canada. Ah, we have snow. Now I'm sorry the quality got so much better, GoPro, but that's what happens when you lie about your sensor size and you only use one one of the centerpiece, much like a donut would. Now we are in beauty mode. And I fell in love with this. Once we switched to 1080p and put beauty mode to four, so much better than it used to be. I used to be in 4K. What the hell are you doing? Oh, that is disgusting. You're so old looking, and decrepit. You're just the smell is coming off you. That is sad. Oh, wow. Can you believe how fugly he looks? What do you do? What is wrong with your glove? Get a new glove, you hobo. There's a hole in your thumb. You can use that to pick your nose or what? Oh, what a loser. Oh, this is sad. It's hard to watch. It's hard to watch. My glove is fine. So next on the list is the phone. Your phone. Whatever that is, is probably good enough. Although, just a little side rant. 
The Huawei P40 Pro is pretty nice. The colors are weird, but it's not like weird exposure stepping, hopefully. Where you're just like, what's going on? Like you're annoyed by all the flickering lights. Just weird things happen in smartphones and it's really annoying. So most of them suck, but maybe you'll be all right. Just they're over sharpened, they're ugly, they're fake looking, but some of them are somewhat natural. They're light, good stabe, good audio. You just get a lav mic right in there. You're good to go. Phones are the best. Now, unfortunately, I have no way of actually checking the rest of the list because it was on my phone. So uh, I could go by memory. The next one is a Airy Alexa 30. Next on the list is actually the GoPro 11. And I just want to do a quick side by side. I haven't, I did this little test at home because the one problem with the GoPro 11 is you're not actually in focus. It's the one problem with all action cams. They're focused on infinity, the one thing I'm trying to blur. And so it's a bit cheap looking, but whatever. So next to me is a close focusing loser. And he focuses close, but from my tests, it was like from one foot, it was much sharper. From two feet, it was barely different. And then beyond, it just got worse and worse. So is he sharper? If he is, I will lead him into the street and he will get hit by a car. So in the GoPro 11, you could also throw in DJI Action 3, Sony X3000, freaking whatever little eight man thing that's $12 at Best Buy, just an action cam. But I like this one because you can rig it out, put a glimmer glass or close focusing filter on it. And then you're actually in focus with ton in the background. External audio, 10 bit over here, super slow-mo. It's hard to beat an action cam. Probably wins the category just because you could throw it off a cliff, it might survive. Now what I love most about the GoPro 11 is that you can do open gate and the sensor is tall for full life vlogging. And this is good. No other phone or camera can do this and consider yourself lucky if these are your options. Okay, so next on the list, we're getting into actual mirrorless cameras now. This is actually the lightest camera I could think of that would still give you like decent results. It's actually the Nikon Z30 with the kit lens. Now, the problem with this, that's only 540 grams. It's almost unbelievable for an APS-C sensor you get 120 frames per second slow-mo. Your only problem is you're stuck with one lens and it's a kit lens, it's not the best, but that's the widest option that has stabilization. So like it's your only option and you're stuck with it forever. You got some zoom range. The stabe's not great, but it's okay. It's not good. But damn, Nikon, colors, get the flippy screen, slow-mo, custom modes, 4K. 30, whatever you got, it's not good, but it's the Nikon, wow. I mean, to think that that setup is lighter than my Panasonic G85 was, not that it could compete with stabilization, nothing could. In fact, I'm trying to compete right now with a Panasonic G85 and he's better than me. You all know that, that's the best system. It's not on my list because we've moved on. We're not like trying to ride a dinosaur to work. It's time to like get something better here with slow motion. Nikon Z30, you could do worse. Not much worse, but next on the list, Fuji XS10 with the 16 mil Tony 2.8. That's a light lens. You do have to extend it out a bit. It's not gonna be the most inspiring vlog you ever seen, but like you'll get some cinematic colors. The look will be like, wow, what are you shooting on? That's amazing. Why is it so shaky? Are you, is there no stabilization? It has Ibis but it's not, not that it works, but like these are the lightest options we have. And it's a decent little city, 240 frames per second slow-mo, super light, super cheap. You could do worse, not much worse. Okay, next option, Panasonic G95. I only put that in because of the nostalgia factor that the G85 gave me. So I figure go for the upgrade, you get 120 frames per second, worst autofocus in the business, but stayed decent, super light. You get the Leica 9mm 1.7, corners are gonna be warping at you. It's not great, it is not great, but 
look at these corners. If I didn't crop it that little bit, the little vignetting, and if I was walking, like they'd be wa wobbling, waving, wavy wobbly on the GoPro. What the hell is that? So I had to crop. Did it even get rid of it? Probably not, whatever. All right, your next option. These are getting heavier and heavier, but still really light. Olympus EM-13 with the 12 mil Tony 2. I've done it. I've made many videos on that setup. It's super light, super stable. The look that you can get, as long as you put a little, either a glimmer glass or the Black Pro Mist filter on there, it's like, I'm blown away. You still cannot beat that thing. The cinematic colors, everything about it. There's just, the slow-mo really crops in there. And it's manual focus only. That hurts. It is single autofocus, but the odds that you could actually touch that back button to focus are not good, monkey arm boy. Oh, that scared the life out of me. It was like a hawk, a baby hawk. I have the close focusing filter on it. Why would that be a good thing? So I found the autofocus was actually more reliable on the EM-13 than whatever this Olympus OM-1 is pretending to be. So don't even look at OM system anything. When it comes to our first full frame contender, we have the Canon R8 with the 24 mil 1.8 prime. I cannot believe that that weighs 731 grams only. 20 grams more than that Olympus setup, which was super light. I couldn't believe how light that was. I kind of want to try that. I'll see if Aiden camera gets one soon and then we'll give it a run. But the, I initially picked the 15 to 30 kit lens. I think I have it later on this list. I do. 24.5 to 6.3. It's 851 grams. It's a little more. That's why I was surprised the prime is less, but it's a 1.8. It has stabe. I just, I'm not 100% sure it's going to be enough. Canon lens stabe is not to write home about, not when you're at summer camp. And maybe with the digital stabe, if you're careful, I feel like it's not bad. 180 frames per second with autofocus. Damn, 4K 60, no crop. It's just that battery life. The horrendous battery life. Why? That's the loudest skateboard I've ever heard in my life. My screen went dark. Can I lick it? But hot damn, that would be a fun little setup. For only a slight amount more weight, a lot less features, but you're back in Nikon territory with the Z6 and the new 26 2.8 pancake lens. That thing is light, and that would be your vlogging lens. It's a bit tight, but if you extend it out there, I imagine the IBIS will be pretty decent with that focal length, no waves. Hot damn, get 120 frames per second. Not bad, 4K 60 maybe in a firmware with a crop. Okay, you got something. Full frame, there's no flippy screen. That hurts, but your Nikon, no log, whatever, use flat. It's gonna clip the highlights, whatever. Just like we're clipping now, probably. High noon vlogging, brought to you by closefocusingfilters.com. Get one today. Make sure you're in the entire shot. Nikon, huh? Next one, Sony FX30 with the 11 mil 1.8. These are getting less and less inspiring now. That's actually pretty heavy. The FX30 is not a light camera. You could say ZV-E10, but give me a break. Just the 8 bits. It's just such an afterthought. This is for vlogging. And now 45% crop for the stabe. So FX30, it's almost like an A7S III, only you're cropping a lot. But for just vlogs, the 11 mil. Hmm. just for the last couple. R8 we mentioned with the 15 to 30, that's now where that weight category brings it. I thought he was gonna be louder than he was. Panasonic GH6, like a 9mm 1.7, that's the cinema. It's heavy, 
953 grams, micro four thirds. But we're talking 300 frames per second. Autofocus could actually rely on yourself. And the wavy corners might be there. It's a bit of an issue. If it is, you get the Olympus 12 mil Tony too. Just as light, if not lighter. Better looking in every way. But hot damn, not bad. Can't believe you're this far down in the list, fat boy. Panasonic S5 II with the 20 to 60. Not much heavier. And you're full frame now. Way better autofocus. That lens is decent. That's the one I would use. The 18 mil is too wavy. Don't even look. And the last on my list is just the Sony a7S III, just because I have it with the 20 mil 1.8. Could you really beat that thing? You could vlog day or night. I swear to God, old man. Like even in this shady part, this image probably fell the hell apart. Did that rhyme? Just a poor choice of words. A7S III. ISO 12,800, you're good to go. It's just, it's heavy. And I would much rather something like this be the solution. Something super light, that's what makes it fun. You can run, you can dive. And that is life, my friend. Life in a Chinese produce market. That's where you should be. Oh no, the close focusing filter. Oh, they have a vegetable. Oh, that is good. Thank God. Thank God, the specifics on that one. Oh, that's helpful. That is helpful. That's actually where I'm headed, just to go shopping. People wonder, like, why do you vlog? It's like, I was going here. It's fun to make videos along the way. Leave me alone. That's my thing. Vlog on the way to the grocery store. It's a thing. It's a genre. You don't know that it isn't. So what do you think of that list? Which do you think is the best? What's the ideal weight to cost to features ratio? I gotta tell you, I think it's this phone, to be honest with you. 7,000 frames per second, bigger sensor than this and most others. It's hard to beat a phone these days, that, that sucks. And I like that you can clip it on. I can't do that with this. There's no side cages to put this clip on. Links will be down below for everything. You buy one of each, keep it in the pants, Subscribe for more videos. See you later.